hello. So, my name is uh, Gabriel Hunter Marsh. I'm a strength and conditioning coach and a amateur boxing coach from London. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick video on making weight and maintaining weight, and I'm going to talk about some articles. Well, one article and a podcast that I found, and then I'm going to talk about what coaches think of boxers who are overweight. I'm not a nutritionist, so I can't give out any diet plans. I also don't know what I'm talking about and I don't want to and it's illegal. The first article that I want to talk about is one by the nutritionist from GB Boxing. It's a very easy article to read. It's just a very basic rundown on times to eat food which is very helpful. Most amateur clubs run in the evening. A boxer you don't want to eat loads of carbohydrates after training because you're going to sleep and then you're going to store that as fat. He talks more about it in detail in the article. It's worth reading. He talks about macros carbohydrates, protein and your fat and he says you need a lot of carbohydrates, moderate amount of protein and low intake of fat because you're going to be using the carbs for high intensity training, that's our main source of energy, you want the protein to recover from that, the fats are going to give you micronutrients and kind of look after your organs is what fats do. So that's that article, it also, oh yeah really quickly, it also gives a, a little chart at the bottom of food that's low in the glycemic index so basically it takes a long time to burn off. Um, which is good because we want slow releasing foods if you're doing stuff throughout the day, which we will be as a, as boxers. It's a good article, it's nice and easy to read. It's obviously by a professional. He works at the highest level of boxing in England for the Olympic boxers uh, and he's, he does all their nutrition, so it's worth it's worth it. The next one is a podcast by Mark Ruppetto, who's a, who's a famous strength and conditioning coach, um, so not a nutritionist, but he has a dietitian on his program a dietitian is someone who can prescribe to you meals if you have health issues. It's a big degree. In England, if you want to see a dietitian, you'd have to have, you'd either be paying a lot of money for, and you'd be an athlete, or you would have to be ill and on the NHS and they'd be giving you a dietitian for, to help you out. Uh, and he's talking for over an hour, so it's a professional in quite a niche field about. Uh, again, macros, body composition, supplements, talks about how, when you, which is really interesting and it's very beneficial for boxers as well, because I hear boxers say this a lot, they say they're going to eat this food that they want, so they might want a burger, or they might want something, I don't know, just a cheat meal, and then they're going to talk about how they're going to burn it off doing some mad long crazy run or some mad long session, and... This guy is basically saying that through research that people people don't burn off you can't burn off food unless you just do a madness and it's just it's just pointless because you're just going to mess up your you're going to have to recover from that really long run you're not going to be you're not even going to be in a good state to do it because you've just eaten bad food and um, it's just going to mess up your training basically it's unprofessional so that leads me on to my next point if you're a boxer and you're coming into one of say I'm, say I'm running a session and you're coming into the session and you're overweight and it's in the middle of the season um, I'm talking more like over a kilogram of weight. As a coach, it's gonna be hard for me to take you seriously because if if we've got a tournament coming up or you've got a fight coming up or just the fact that we're in the middle of the season and you're overweight, it's not gonna make me wanna work with you. It's a weight cake with sport, so you have to be on weight. At the beginning of the season, you can be two kilograms overweight, that's fine. Let's lose that weight, we'll ease into it, everyone's in the same boat. In the middle of the season, if we've got tournaments coming up, let's say you're a few kilograms overweight and we've got a tournament coming up in five weeks, you're probably gonna be spending three weeks trying to lose that weight and then that's only going to leave you really a week of optimal because you're going to be tapering for 10 days so that's only going to leave you a week of optimal performance so if you're not on weight there's probably a likelihood a high likelihood that you're not going to be fit going to that fight and we can't really progress on any of the skills that we want to develop on so it doesn't instill much hope in the future also coaches talk to each other if you're a matchmaker and you don't know who's on weight and one of the coaches says, well, the matchmaker says to a coach, is so-and-so on weight? And then I go, no, they're not on weight. And then the matchmaker goes, do you think he'll be ready? And I go, no, he won't be ready. And that happens a few times and we keep having a conversation about you not being on weight. It's probably going to be the case that we're going to drop you or we're just going to stop giving you bouts. And then it's kind of pointless you being there and you're taking up someone's space. Also, if there's two people the same weight and there's a tournament coming up, one of them, even if they're more uh, gifted in terms of genetics or skills or whatever it is, and the other one is constantly on weight, they're probably going to give it to the one to show determination and being on weight. That's just fair, isn't it? So you are probably competing with people in your club, especially if you're middleweight or 69 kg of weight or weight. And if you're constantly fluctuating in that weight, they're just going to give it to someone who isn't. Saying that, I understand how hard it is from being a boxer, how hard it is to maintain weight. It's probably the, it was probably the biggest thing that I knew the least about when I was boxing. 
Um, I didn't know anything about times to eat food. I used to just eat. I kind of I knew that what food was bad. Obviously, I didn't eat fried food or kind of chocolate and crisps and things like that. I didn't know when to eat. I didn't know anything about macros because I was a boxer in my head. I wasn't a nutritionist. I didn't. I needed probably someone to give me that information rather than looking for it for myself. You're stressed out. You're going to go into a fight with someone. You're not. That's the last thing you're thinking of is looking up food and macros and things like that. You're watching boxing videos and trying to recover from training. So I understand it. Learn the basics at the very least because that will probably eradicate 70% of just bullshit out there and it will bridge that gap of just not knowing stuff. So really all you need to do is go on a calorie deficit, track your food, everyone can do it now with my fitness pal. everyone's got a mobile phone, learn how to use that, you can track food, it's very easy nowadays. And if you're a male, a young male boxer, there isn't really a reason, an excuse to be overweight during season. Females, you can kind of fluctuate because girls on the periods they up and down weight a little bit but men there isn't really an excuse at all especially if you're young if you're in your 20s and you're overweight there's no good reason for it anyway that's me kind of moaning having a go but it's the truth so read the articles have a look at the podcast check them out it's not me but it's worth doing just for your own knowledge and development as an athlete hope that's helpful hope that's helpful in some way i'll talk to you next time